When I first got started as a hobby CNC user, I considered ferrous metals to be in this weird mythical category of materials that were out of reach for most sane people. And though steel and stainless steel are definitely challenging for us hobby users, I discovered that they're not impossible to machine. If you wanted to make a really robust branding iron head or your own leather stamp or a small custom tool, you could knock it out on the Nomad if you're smart about it. But let me reiterate just to set expectations appropriately, cutting steel or stainless steel on the Nomad is difficult. There are a lot of ways for things to go wrong, and if you're not already quite comfortable with machining aluminum, you probably shouldn't attempt steel. It's not that it's dangerous, it's just that you'll probably end up murdering a couple end mills along the way. With that being said, here's everything I learned about trying to machine ferrous metals on the Nomad. First things first, you need the right tool. More specifically, you need the right tool coating. And for desktop CNCs, Altin is the way to go. There are more exotic coatings you can use, but aluminum titanium nitride provides the best balance of durability and value on a desktop machine. The second thing to look for is tool geometry. Steel is a whole new ballgame when it comes to machining. You are at a point where the strength of the material being cut is uncomfortably close to that of your cutters. Your cutting tools will inevitably begin to wear, and if there's any chatter at all or chip recutting, you'll probably end up chipping flutes, which will send your end mill into a death spiral. If one flute is out of commission, the flute behind it has to work twice as hard. You can mitigate this by reducing stress concentrations in your end mill, and the best way to do that is to get corner radius tools. Corners will be the first things to chip or break off under stress, so if you don't need sharp corners in your pockets, don't get square end mills. For my testing, I've chosen to use a 4 flute Altin tool from Lakeshore Carbide that has a 15 thou corner radius. Now let's talk about assumptions and recipes. I am doing my tests completely dry, no lubrication at all and only a modest stream of air to clear chips and apply a little bit of cooling. A periodic squirt of WD-40 or cutting fluid would definitely help and increase your tool life, but I'm interested in exploring the worst case scenario for machining steel. I'm using two resources to guide my experimentation, speeds and feeds from tool vendors and CNC cookbook. I'm machining O1 tool steel which can be hardened by heating and then quenching in oil. So based on the recommendations from Harvey and Lakeshore, I should be targeting about 200 surface feet per minute. But those recommendations are for industrial CNC's with luxuries like flood coolant. Cutting without coolant or lubrication is something that changes the physics of the cut. CNC Cookbook recommends reducing your surface footage and increasing your chip load to compensate. So that basically means lowering the RPM while maintaining feed rate. This will result in thicker chips that carry away more heat and reduce thermal shock on your cutter. I'm also going to exclusively use adaptive toolpaths for roughing because cutting forces go all over the place when you use 2D contours or pockets. If machining steel is something you want to do, I think you should absolutely be using an advanced cam package. Especially because you get features like lead-ins and ramping, and these are important things that will minimize the chances of you breaking a tool. With that being said, here is the adaptive recipe I ended up with for O1 tool steel. For the Lakeshore Carbide 170033 x 015 r 332nd inch corner radius 4 flute all tin coated end mill, 8000 RPM, a feed rate of 6.4 inches per minute, 12 thou optimal load, 25 thou depth of cut. This is one of the few times I'll be deliberately running at something less than full speed on the Nomad because 10,000 RPM would put me over the recommended surface footage. For finishing walls, I like to creep up on maybe 8 thou of radial stock to leave, for finishing floors, I try to have 4 thou or less of axial stock to leave. And note that when you're finishing, you can afford to take a larger chip load, so I'll feed in the neighborhood of 8 inches per minute. If you want to do 2D contouring, I would choose a depth of cut of about 6 thou or less and expect a shorter tool life. Now, while I'm playing around with ferrous metals, it's also worth taking a look at stainless steel. Grades like 303 in particular are a lot more forgiving with respect to surface footage, which means we can run at 10,000 RPM and feed faster, closer to 8 to 10 inches per minute with an adaptive clear. I've also reduced my cut depths by about 20% out of an abundance of caution, so 20 thou axial and 10 thou radial, but if you want to push it, I think you can probably use the depths of cut from the O1 tool steel recipe. And as an added bonus for using a corner radius tool, you can also finish 3D contours with it, treating it like a tiny ball end mill, but with way better surface footage. And the end result will look pretty good. Machining steel is pushing the limits of small form factor machines, of tool metallurgy, material science, but if you need to knock out a couple small prototypes in a pinch, you can accomplish it with a desktop CNC. If you're cutting steel completely dry, I would expect about 2-3 hours of life out of your end mill. 
If you're using a WD-40 drip, you can probably extend that by a factor of two or more, but then you have a slightly sticky mess to clean up and your entire room will smell like WD-40. Some people might actually enjoy that, but unfortunately I have to keep my office fairly clean. I hope this video was enlightening, or at least a little bit interesting. If you enjoyed it, punch that like button and subscribe for more desktop CNC content coming soon. Something a bit more ambitious with steel just might be in the works. Until then, good luck and have fun machining, folks.